Do you read Stephen King? Good news, there's a club for you. The Losers Club. Every Friday, us losers journey through the never-ending wastelands of King's Dominion. We sink our teeth into each of King's novels, dive deep into the lore, and review every adaptation. Even better, we're always having guests over. Thomas Jane, Will Wheaton, Mary Lambert, Mick Garris, the list goes on. So what are you waiting for? Join us as we read on through long days and pleasant nights. Consequence Podcast Network. And welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. I'd like to thank everybody who uh, checks us out every single week, the multiple interviews Monday, Wednesday, and Friday that they debut. Uh, thank you for keeping up with all of those. Uh, if you feel so inspired, please do give the series a rating, leave a review. You listen to podcasts, you know how this works. And if you're not a subscriber, uh, now's a great time to do that. Hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with the interview views as well. Join the party. Join the family. Join the fun. I'm Kyle Meredith. Today my guest is the band Whitney. I'll be talking with Max and Julian about the brand new record Forever Turned Around. This is their sophomore record, the first one that follows up the 2016 sleeper hit Light Upon the Lake. Now as the history goes, they had come from the band Smith Westerns, and when that band dissolved, kind of broke off on their own, found a brand new sound, and man did fans love it. The songs Golden Days and Woman's are now indie staples, classics. So that's a lot to follow up. And they have knocked it out of the park with this sophomore LP. We'll hear about those writing sessions and finding the direction of these new songs. It's been billed as sort of an album about coming to terms, dealing with anxiety, and the relationships we keep. Of course, even when you're talking about personal moments these days, that usually kind of bleeds into talking about bigger issues. It's all wrapped into one, how our daily lives intersect with the sociopolitical things that are happening around the world. That's also true for this record. On the music side of things, we'll talk about what it's like having an eight-member band and how to write around that without songs sounding too busy and the stories behind songs before I know it giving up and the instrumental rhododendron. Let's jump into it talking about the record Forever Turned Around. It's Kyle Meredith with Whitney. How are you doing? Congratulations on Forever Turned Around. It is a fantastic record and uh, it, it looks like, you know, with all the accolades kind of rolling in, uh, you're going mi- to maybe getting a repeat of, uh, of that magic in a bottle that happened the first time around. Is it, are you feeling this in the same way? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we're just out here like playing shows, which is, you know, obviously way different than making records, but the crowds are growing. So that's yeah. about, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're kind of in like the, the vacuum of touring, which is like its own, like non world, which is an inter- it's, you know, it's like an interesting place. To, to be right after releasing a record and kind of a I think a good one because you can kind of escape seeing that seeing like kind of th- those kind of like accolades or whatever and just like really focus on like the interaction between you and the fans the show it's what, less artificial or something true the the album is sort of billed as um as a coming to terms record I guess uh, maybe sort of questioning uh, everything and and if that's the case, what took you all in, in that direction this time? And and what exactly does that mean? I I feel like we just, as far as like the subject matter goes on this record, it's just a lot about like commitment and the ups and downs that come with it. I mean, coming to terms with like you know this is my life, which I feel like was like a thing that we kind of had to admit to ourselves because before Whitney, you know, when you're just so young, it's like, oh, I could do, I could have this phase in my life and then go into like some other phase, go back to college or like blah, blah, blah. But I feel like this, you know, we're just fully committing to this band and there's ups and downs that come with that. We just tried to put that into songs, I guess. And also something that I found like kind of funny is like, you know, we wrote a lot of the records from like a, a point of, you know, feeling kind of stable in certain relationships and maybe some of the paranoia that comes with being in a stable relationship or having like some stability with like our music careers and stuff. And now I listened to it the other day, like after touring for a month and I'm like, feel completely unstable in a certain sense <laughs> whether that's like with my personal relationship or you know like just the distance that happens on tour and found the record kind of comforting in that sense too so it's interesting to see it kind of flip back around in that way you know that, that coming of age thing it, it, it is uh, a theme that many artists have at least touched on 
uh, throughout the years. You know, because I think we have multiple moments in, in our life of that. You know, you, you have those teenage years and then you have those late 20s years that kind of brings around another one. But it's not always with the surrounding environment. And I, and I guess I'm talking about what's going on politically and, and environmentally and just everything else that we're braced with. Do you find that there are moments on the record when the really personal moments are still blurring with these socio-political ones? I think definitely. And it's something that we've talked about quite a bit in doing like interviews for this record. Um, yeah, I feel like we just like we went about it talking about um, that sort of stuff in a more like reflective way and just like presenting moods that like kind of, you know, like falling rain and the cold wind and, and seasons changing before I know it. It's like, yeah, that can like you can read that in many ways. But the way that we kind of thought about it was climate change. So, yeah, yeah I don't know. It's like we wanted this record to be a place where you can kind of hide from that stuff and like forget about it but then maybe also think about it if you want to <laughs> that that line you just mentioned uh from before i know it sees you change before i know it I keep changing before I know it. There's a little bit of uh, Fleetwood Max landslide there in, in, a, in a way, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I've never thought about it that way, but it's pretty funny. Yeah. I like that song. Yeah. I'm getting older, too. And I, I want to bring up the, uh, the, the first single with Giving Up because this is a thing that, that was kind of, um, I don't know, is it, a little tricky, guys, Paul, because those words, giving up, but when you're talking about a long-term relationship, I, I think I've read... You all talk about, like, it's it's not a dire sort of way. You know, earlier Julian mentioned kind of a lot of the writing was taken from, like, highs and lows of personal relationships, being in a band, you know, kind of life choices. I think that's a good example of, like, a song on the record where we're exploring, like, a low of relationship where it's not necessarily, like, a breakup song, but I'm sure everyone that's been in long-term relationships has felt, like, the lows and moments of disconnection, and it's the feeling where you're not sure if it's going to work out even though you're in love with someone, and not for, like, reasons that are, like, evil or, like, you know, not because of, like, cheating or, like, emotional abuse or just, like, general, like, crappiness in a relationship, but more just the natural dissolving of a relationship over time and how relationships go through weird changes throughout their life. Have you all, uh, you know, you, t- you talk about a lot of this, you know, what it, what it means to be on the road and, and have relationships like this. Now that you're on this second round, have you all fell, uh, found the healthy ways to kind of live your life this time? Or, or are you still searching that path? I think we're getting better. I think we're, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we're just getting older and we like realize that we don't always have to like take it to the limit every night, I guess. Because we just want to stay sane, and we want to be able to do this forever. It's also, yeah, it's weird. Like I feel like we're about to finish this uh, leg we were on. We're, we basically did like the South and the East Coast, and over the course of the past month, and we right now we're like in New York playing our last two shows over the next couple of days. But like, there's always that moment when you get back home and finally see your significant other again, where you're like, "Are you feeling okay with all this?" You know, like I feel like the moment of reckoning and real conversation is very imminent for pretty much everyone in the band that has a famous kind other because you know, as much as you text and talk on the phone like I feel like the real kind of talking happens when you get home from tour and really try to feel see how everyone's feeling in the relationship so we will see I mean, how we did yeah what what a weird dual life that you that you kind of that you have to lead uh, in this profession yeah you know more on the music side what effect did having Ziad back in the sessions have for you all because it seems pretty prominent at, at su- to some degree I think it was just the type of thing where it's like, yeah, Max and I like could have just isol- isolated ourselves even more, but like, and still probably finished the record. But we just feel so close with the odd, and then like, I don't know. I, I feel like at times we did need someone to kind of like buffer between us and like look at both of our ideas and like validate them, and then also like just just help us work through. I guess like the vision that we had. Coming from, um, you know, all of you all coming from the Smith Westerns and and for whatever that was, and now you have Whitney and you're on your second record. Do you find that Whitney has a defined sound and does it need to? Um, obviously, there are similarities, you know, in the in the sound between the fir- between these two albums that are very different from, you know, a similar group of people that worked together just years before that. Yeah, I mean, I think the f- first, the most important thing in kind of the Whitney camp of thought, and that um, kind of extends to the greater band as well, that maybe wasn't as important to Smith Questions as um, just really focusing on, right, like the songwriting aspect of it. And I think with Forever Turned Around, we really focused on songwriting and also tried to explore more 
into the sounds we had found on the first record. A lot more string arrangements happened, um, making all the arrangements a little wider and more dense. Um, and that was kind of where we took the second album. But I think moving forward, we'll still continue to really focus on songwriting and catchiness, but maybe find some different textures to add in and experiment a little more in the studio. I mean, eight musicians, right? That's what you guys are working with all together, eight musicians. How does that yeah. not sound busier? How do you, How is it that you all aren't just walking all over each other and... You know, and or, or or some arcade fire type of wall of thing that's happening. You know, it's so tasteful what you all do. I guess the way that we work is like Max and I are still like the principal songwriters, and so we kind of like delineate or like decipher like where certain musician space could go. You know, it'll be like oh, like this song, like we definitely hear like a trumpet section or like just that texture could like pop out here and like, but then let Will the part or like the solo or something i feel like we are kind of like we're trying to make sure that everyone's not walking all over each other you know as the story goes too i mean uh you all had written some songs that uh, sounded like you kind of threw them away at the beginning uh, pretty unhappy and 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 found the groove later on I, I i did wonder like how different do these songs sounds like whatever you all started working on at the beginning of the sessions um, I think songs that I wouldn't say we necessarily threw away, like there's a couple songs in th- specifically that like I believe we'll see the light of day. Um, it just like in the album sequencing, it just kind of didn't make sense for them anymore. But they sound like in the same vein, I would say. But as an album as a whole, it seems stronger, being slightly more concise and saving those ideas for a later time to maybe stand on their own. There's a lot of pretty moments on this record, but I, I do get surprised on that instrumental version, that instrumental song with Rhododendron. Is that, did you all intend for that to be the instrumental, or is that one of those moments where, like, you know what? There's no lyrics that, will, that I can put on top of this. I think we always, because I, I feel like most of the records that we listen to and, like, those classic albums usually have instrumentals on them. We went into this process knowing that we wanted one, for sure. And it came together really quick. And there was maybe only, like, five minutes of thought of whether or not like a vocal would work but it just works on its own and 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 perfectly placed right in the middle as one of those classic albums would have done it i mean when you're thinking about the vinyl and flipping it yeah. that's the moments <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly we that was that we talked about that. Well, you can tell. I mean, so much thought went into this. It is a great record and so exciting to hear you all again with this. Uh, and I'll wrap it up with that, too, guys. Uh, congratulations on Forever Turned Around. Thank you so much for the music, and and congrats. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It's been a pleasure talking Thanks to so you. Much. Yep, I look forward to catching on the road. Thank you all. For sure. Bye. 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 Peace. Big thanks to Max and Julian of Whitney. The new record is called Forever Turned Around. It is now available. And thanks to you for checking out the series today, listening to the interview. Again, now's a great time to uh, to give the series a rating, maybe leave a review or just say hi in the comments box, or hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Uh, interviews come out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, all your favorite artists and what they're up to. So keep up with us. Hit that subscribe button wherever you get your podcast from. That also includes YouTube and Spotify, as well as the other usual places like iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podchaser, Acast, etc., etc. After that, head to WFPK.org, where I do a show Monday through Fridays at 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour of uh, song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, and bonus interviews as well. That's WFPK.org. Consequenceofsound.net has your music and film news. You can also find me at Twitter, at Kyle Meredith, Facebook slash Kyle Meredith. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.